there was something tremendously significant about Sardinia. Presently, there are 7,000 extant towers on the island of Sardinia. The stones incorporated into some of these towers are massive. On this island, with all of these megalithic towers, there was a cult of giants. Sardinia, a large island nestled in the Mediterranean Sea, is famous for its unique and ancient megalithic structures known as Nuragi. These prehistoric monuments are emblematic of the Nuragic civilization, which thrived on the island from approximately 1800 BCE until the Roman conquest in 238 BCE. The Nuragi stand as a testament to the ingenuity and craftsmanship of this ancient society, reflecting their remarkable architectural skills, complex social organization, and rich cultural practices. I think that we are dealing with a lost civilization that was shamanistic in its basis. The Nuragi of Sardinia weren't discovered in a single moment. Instead, they were gradually recognized and studied over time. These structures have always been a part of the Sardinian landscape, well known to the local population for centuries. It wasn't until the 19th century, however, that they began to attract significant scholarly attention. The initial attempts to document the Nuragi date back to the 16th century, with historians like Giovanni Francesco Fara and Francesco dell'Itala mentioning these impressive structures in their writings. Despite their mentions, systematic studies weren't conducted until much later, and it was only over time that more detailed descriptions and sketches brought wider attention to these ancient edifices. The formal archaeological study of Nuragi took off in the 19th century, spurred by European interest in ancient and prehistoric cultures. Our understanding of prehistory must change. Several scholars played crucial roles in the early understanding and cataloguing of these structures. One such figure was Alberto La Marmora, a geographer and naturalist who extensively explored Sardinia. In his work, Voyage en Sardaigne, published in 1826, La Marmora provided some of the earliest detailed descriptions and drawings of Nuragi. His work laid the foundation for future studies and brought international attention to Sardinia's megalithic structures, sparking a wider interest in these fascinating monuments. The increased focus on these ancient structures in the 19th century set the stage for a more systematic approach to their study and preservation. The efforts of these early scholars paved the way for deeper exploration and understanding of the Nuragic civilization, highlighting the profound historical and cultural significance of the Nuragi in Sardinia's heritage. The megalithic structures of Sardinia, Italy, known as Nuragi, were constructed by the Nuragic civilization, which thrived on the island. These ancient megalithic edifices served multiple purposes, including fortresses, places of worship and residences. Characterized by their conical towers and complex designs, over 7,000 of these fascinating structures have been identified scattered throughout Sardinia. They were constructed during the Bronze Age between 1900 BCE and 730 BCE, and they symbolize the advanced construction techniques and societal organization of the Nuragic people. The Nuragi were first extensively studied in the 19th and early 20th centuries. One of the most notable early researchers was Giovanni Liliu, an Italian archaeologist whose significant excavations and studies in the mid-20th century brought international attention to these ancient structures. I think the dating of quite a number of megalithic sites needs to be reconsidered. His work at Nuragasu Nuraxi in Barumini is particularly noteworthy and highlighted the importance of these historical monuments. The Nuragi are built with large, irregularly shaped stones that fit together without the use of mortar. This dry stone technique is notable for its durability and the precision with which the stones were cut and placed. The stones used in construction vary significantly in size and weight, with some weighing several tons. The largest stones are often used at the base of the structures to provide stability, while smaller stones are placed higher up. These stones were sourced locally, with basalt and limestone being the most commonly used materials, facilitating the widespread construction of Nuragi throughout Sardinia. Most Nuragi feature a central conical tower, known as a keep, with one or more surrounding secondary towers. These are connected by a network of walls and passageways. The central tower typically contains one or more interior chambers, sometimes accessed by a spiral staircase. The design of Nuragi varies, 
with some being single towers and others forming complex multi-tower structures. One of the most significant nuragi is Nurage Su Nuraxi in Barumini, excavated by Giovanni Liliu in the 1950s. This site features a central tower surrounded by four smaller towers with an extensive village of huts and defensive walls. In 1997, Nuragesu Nuraxi was designated a UNESCO World Heritage Site due to its historical significance and well-preserved state. The central tower stands approximately 18 and a half meters high and consists of three stories, making it one of the most complex and well-preserved examples of Nuragic architecture. Nurage Losa, located in Abasanta, is known for its triangular layout and central tower surrounded by thick walls. It includes a courtyard and additional rooms for various purposes, representing the architectural sophistication of the Nuragic civilization. Built from basalt blocks, Nuragia Losa features a well-preserved interior with a corbel vaulted ceiling, showcasing the advanced construction techniques of its builders. Another notable Nuraga is Nuraga Santu Antin in Toralba, one of the largest Nuragi. Featuring a central tower with three smaller surrounding towers connected by a defensive wall. This impressive structure showcases the defensive capabilities and strategic planning of the Nuragic people. Known as Sadomo de Sure, Nuraga Santu Antin is one of the most majestic Nuragi, with a central tower that reaches up to 17 meters in height. The Nuragic civilization of Sardinia is renowned for its fascinating megalithic structures, and beyond the iconic Nuragi, there are several other remarkable sites and artifacts that offer deeper insights into this ancient culture. One such intriguing site is the Well of Santa Cristina in Poli Latino. This subterranean temple is an architectural marvel, featuring a trapezoidal vestibule, a descending staircase, and a circular well chamber. The well is constructed with meticulously cut basalt blocks, forming a perfect dome over the chamber. What makes it even more captivating is its precise alignment with the sun during the equinoxes, where sunlight penetrates the entrance and illuminates the water inside, creating a striking visual effect. The precision of the stone cutting and the dry construction technique reflect advanced knowledge of geometry and engineering. Remarkably, the well remains dry even in the wettest seasons, showcasing sophisticated water management techniques. Theories suggest the well possibly served as a solar calendar marking important agricultural or ceremonial events. Another fascinating aspect of the Nuragic civilization is their craftsmanship in creating bronzetti, small bronze statuettes found at various sites. These figurines, depicting warriors, animals and deities, are detailed and showcase high levels of craftsmanship. The variety of figures, including intricately detailed warriors and symbolic animals like bulls, highlights the Nuragic people's artistic sophistication and the symbolic importance of these figures in their culture. The myths of the world, those that have survived, are the hall of records of the lost past. Many of these bronzetti are believed to have been used in ancient ceremonies, serving as votive offerings or representations of mythological stories and they indicate a society with distinct social roles and a rich pantheon of gods and goddesses. The giant's tombs is another impressive feature of the Nuragic landscape. These megalithic gallery graves consist of a large central stele and a burial chamber covered with massive stone slabs, with entrances often marked by semicircular forecourts. Kodu Vecu is one of the largest and most well-preserved examples, with its central stele standing over four meters high, and the burial chamber designed to accommodate multiple individuals. These tombs demonstrate the Nuragic people's ability to move and manipulate large stones and were likely used for communal burials, indicating a collective approach to death and the afterlife. Local legends often associate these tombs with giants, reflecting the monumental scale and awe-inspiring nature of these structures. Many of these tombs are oriented to align with specific celestial events, such as solstices or equinoxes, suggesting a deep connection between neuragic burial practices and astronomical observations. The alignment of giants' tombs with celestial events is similar to other megalithic structures worldwide, indicating that the neuragic people possessed advanced knowledge of astronomy and used it in their spiritual and everyday lives. These tombs may have served not only as burial sites, but also as locations for ritualistic activities related to ancestor worship and seasonal ceremonies. The communal nature of giants' tombs is reminiscent of other ancient collective burial sites, 
such as the passage tombs of Newgrange in Ireland, which also align with astronomical events, highlighting the widespread ancient practice of integrating burial rituals with celestial phenomena.